All right, you guys, welcome back to another ECW review. Yes. April 10, 2007, we are two weeks away from WrestleMania. I mean, two weeks after WrestleMania or whatever. Two weeks post Wrestle Fucking Mania. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've got Finny Mac on the show. Yes. Yeah, we kick off with Finny Mac. Yeah, there we go. Bringing out his, his, his great, his best uh, Heisenberg fucking look appearance. Coming out with the hat, the cowboy hat. Probably stole this for. I mean, Jim Ross probably backstage. JR's backstage taking a. What does he take again? I'm not Bell, seizures. Bell's attack. Aye. He's taking a BP attack and McMahon just. Swooped in and... That's my hat, or, or maybe it's when Kane burned him alive. McMahon just swooped in, put him out with the fire extinguisher. Like, here, I'm going to have this wee hat for when uh, Lashley shaves me in about three years' time. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that could have been what happens. McMahon comes out, looking like Heisenberg, says that he's banned Bobby Lashley for the arena tonight. And McMahon pissed at the crowd, or, you know, chanting, you know, you're bald and all this shit. And McMahon's just uh, no having it. No happy that he lost him. Uh, his Umaga lost to Trump's... Lashley at the at the paper view and McMahon uh, claims that he's going to make Bobby Lashley's life a living hell and he makes a match for the pay per view for Backlash. It's going to be a three on one handicap match for the ECW Championship. It's going to be McMahon, Shane McMahon, and Umaga versus Bobby Lashley. I mean, how the hell can Bobby Lashley overcome those numbers? Unless he gets Donny T. I mean, well, technically, Lashley Umaga is pretty 50 50. So, when you add Shane and Mr. McMahon to the mix, Bobby Lashley's not chances of winning drastically go down. I get it, they're pushing Lashley, but how can this get a MAGA guy go for, like, near beating Cena twice to needing three-on-one Yeah, to beat the ECW champ? Yeah, it, just, it doesn't seem like it should happen. But it's happening, guys. It's going to happen. So, we'll find out what happens at the, uh, at the pay-per-view. We had uh, CM Punk and Elijah Burke uh, and RVD all backstage. So, again, we've still got Burke, we've still got RVD, the new breed and originals, trying to get CM Punk to join them. I mean, at this stage, I mean, I just don't really get it. I mean, yeah, CM Punk's all oh, going to be the next big fit, but why, why, why are they so desperate for him to join? I, I can kind of understand why the new breed want him to join, because they're heels, and it's like, oh, come on. We need but the strength for an it, To me, it doesn't really make sense why the originals yeah, want sure. Punk to join them when he's not an original. I know. But how can they... Like Stevie Richards? Yeah, how can they, how can they commit and wait, like, oh, here's the ECW originals, but, but like, oh... Punk. You know what I mean? It just doesn't make much sense. Like, I know they can say, oh, but Punk fits the old uh, attitude and style, but... I mean, I just don't see why. Don't, don't, I mean, it just, just for me, it's not really fucking going anywhere, like... But like if Nexus and the core were arguing over someone to join, I mean, it's not, I don't know. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of groups that have been arguing for someone to join. They are like, I don't know. It's like, it's like different McMahon and Flair trying to get Austin to join their brand, because that's, I mean, that's their brand, and they're thinking, fuck, Austin's a star, we need them. We need them. But it doesn't really make much sense to me why both RVD and Elijah Burke are Basically, aye, but I, I guess from their point of view, if it was just a new breed wanting Punk, then there would be no like conflict of interest, and Punk would just be turning down one group to be a loner. So, what she is, yeah, I know. Anyway, on next, with Tommy Dreamer taking on Kevin Thorne, and Kevin Thorne defeats Tommy Dreamer in three and fifteen. Should have went an extra second, and we would have got the magical three sixteen. Uh, I feel like these guys have faced each other. They've probably had these guys have probably faced each other about six times. We're a much smaller roster. You're going to get, and every match has been fucking forgettable. Yeah. I'm not going to say they've been pit. Wait, I will actually. It was Kevin Ford not the one who beat him that time they did the school by roll up? Was that Kevin Ford or was that Striker? No, Striker was the referee. That was Kevin Ford. Aye, right, it was, wasn't it? Remember they did the the whole this no no that thing they did where the guy lied down and they pushed him over. Yeah. And that beat Tommy Dreamer. Remember uh, that? Yeah. You said that was the worst thing you've ever seen? That fucking was. It was. That was easily the worst thing I've ever fucking seen. And keep in mind, Tommy Dreamer also was the guy that ended Kevin Thorne's um, unbeaten, his undefeated streak. So, th these guys have faced each other a shitload of times. Not one match has been memorable. It probably has something to do with the fact that every match has probably been under four minutes, five minutes. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, yeah, Kevin Thorne wins. No one's going to remember this. 
in years to come. I mean, we watched that a couple weeks ago, and I still can't even remember it now. So, But I'm willing to bet it wasn't a good match. Uh, we also had CM Punk taking on Steve Richards, a repeater last week, and CM Punk beat Steve Richards in even quicker fashion this time. So I don't really know what they're trying to get at here. I'll show you. You'll see. Punk wins the majority of his matches, and Steve Richards lose, loses... I'm, I, I want to say almost every single fucking one. So when these two take each other on, I mean, what do you expect to happen? You know, to me, it's, it's a fucking no-brainer. With um, Extreme Expo say, and finally, at least something happens this time. Snitsky comes out to interrupt their dance. Um, they then go to the backstage as well. Or, or in, well, before that, they were backstage in the mirror, you know, getting ready and all that. And then Snitsky approaches them for the back. And Snitsky. I mean, I don't know if they had. I don't know if Snitsky was, or like standing on something, or if they were crouching. But he fucking towered over them. Like, no, he now I know he's a big guy. He's a big guy, and, and they're three women. I get that, but I don't know if it's the way they shot it or the angle. But, I mean, this, he looked like the great Kali and they looked like Rey Mysterio. Yeah. I don't know if that's what they were looking for. But anyway, I mean, I guess, I mean, at least that's something. I don't mind Extreme Expo say when, like, something's actually happening. But seeing it's just them coming out and dancing, it's like, and where's Bald Mahoney? We've not really, like, we've seen, he's had the odd fucking beatdown job match. But, <laughs> see, after that Extreme Strip Poker thing, I think. He's done fuck all. He appeared with the, the originals once, and then I think they just kicked them out. Maybe they couldn't get one there, or there wasn't there to show up. I don't know. I, do, I, do, I mean, I just think... Wait, he was at that time, was he not the five in the ring? Aye. The McMahon came out and back. Exactly, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He was at the odd time with him. I don't know. One week he's an original, one week he's just a, a meth head. No. AC dub. AC. Anyway, move on to the main event, and it is RVD... Versus Marcus Corvon, Corvon with Elijah Burke, RVD with uh, Sabu, Corvon defeats RVD due to outside interference. Uh, at the end, CM Punk comes out, looks as if he's checking on Corvon. Uh, it looks at sorry, it looks as if he's checking on RVD and Sabu who are at ringside and think Sabu has been battered at this stage. Yep. And then he, he climbs into the ring and he, he looks like he's about to fight Corvon and Burke, but then he celebrates with them and he, it looks like he apparently has joined the new breed. And that's how this ECW from uh, the Dunkin' Donuts Centre ends. Well, and we are Dorina. And uh, this... Well, that for Paul's Mahoney is, he's getting some donuts. Was it Scott Steiner? Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, but yeah, I mean that this son of a bitch. I mean this was definitely a step down on last week. This was the the greatest show you'll ever see. Uh, yeah, I didn't enjoy this one. I can't really. Dra I like to drag out these reviews a bit, but there's not a lot you can say about this. Um, I mean, I had McMahon, but that's about it. Where's Lashley? Yeah, well, he's barred for the arena. Oh, so he's going to listen to McMahon, you know what I mean? Like, where, where, could that not have caused a bit of... Yeah, if McMahon yeah, barred Austin, so if McMahon had barred Austin from the arena, Austin would have been... He's just tucked his tail between his legs and went and pissed on a lamppost, I don't think he would have. Mm, I'm going to give it a four. For me, it was underwhelming. Ah, I'll give it a three, I thought it was fresh. Oh, well, fair enough. 3.5 then, the overall rating for this week's ECW. Hopefully next week's is better. I'll tell you what, guys, see once Lashley goes, I'm not saying Lashley's great, but see once he goes, McMahon goes, this... And then, like, Sabu, Sadman, Fan Dam, they all leave about the same time. Oh, hell, hell no. Oh, my brother, testify. I think it's time to move on to EV 2.0. Anyway, till next time. EV 2.0, goodbye. Peace.